This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Over the last year, Huion has been rolling out their higher resolution 4K displays in their drawing tablets. First with their 16 inch display tablet and now with this giant 24 inch display. How is it? Pretty good. Let's check it out. Hello, my name is Brad and I review things that come with pens. This, this is a thing and it comes with a pen. And this thing is called the Huion Canvas Pro 24 4K. And it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's a big old 4K display that you can draw on. Looks like a computer. It smells like a computer. It tastes like a computer. I haven't actually tasted it yet. But this is not a computer. It is a computer monitor and it plugs into a laptop or a desktop PC to make it work. Huion used to be the budget display maker and they still are. You can still get their cheaper products. But as they add some of these more premium features, we're also seeing the price go up. And as we do, we also see that quality gap between Huion and some of their competitors, specifically Wacom, narrow more and more. This display is big, like physically big and heavy. When Huion said it was gonna send me a 24 inch display, I knew it would be large, but until I tried getting it out of the box, it didn't quite sink in with me how big 24 inches actually is. It became clear that getting it out of the box intact was way more important than getting a good picture of me taking it out of the box. It ships with this protective layer of plastic over the top of it, warm tip, Peel it off along the back. There are two feet that fold out really nicely. This is also mountable. It's got the VESA mount mounting holes along the back. So if you want to put it on an arm or something else to hold it up, you're good to go. The main ports are along the back slash top of this device. And there are two extra USB ports and a headphone jack along the side. It comes with what you need to hook it up. There are two USB-C cables, a type A and a type C. You're only gonna need one of those. A power cord and a power brick that it connects to and an HDMI cable. I was kind of curious what was in this black box. Ah, it's a remote thing, very cool. You've probably noticed there aren't any shortcut buttons along the sides of the display. So we have this instead. You also have the pen. We're gonna be using that to draw with. A little pen stand, which has some extra nibs hidden inside and a cleaning cloth instructions and yes a drawing glove let's talk about these specs the big upgrade is that screen it is 4k that's what makes this special and what makes it pricier than what you might be used to seeing with Huion products. The resolution is 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels. And in the past, we only had HD screens on these type of displays. Now on smaller screens, it's not a huge deal, but when you get to these 21 or now 24 inch screens, it's really, really nice to get these higher resolution displays, especially on a drawing tablet. On a drawing tablet, you get a lot closer to the screen than you do a normal monitor. You're basically hovering over it while you draw. You can see the pixels on an HD display, but with a 4K display, it looks so much crisper. One thing to note, this is not a touch screen. That's becoming common on a lot of Windows laptops and even in Wacom's tablets but not here. I didn't miss it. Usually I end up turning it off when I'm drawing anyway, but it's important to note. The screen is also laminated, which means there isn't a gap between the glass that you're drawing on and the screen below it, which makes it feel more accurate than older displays. This is becoming the standard. I don't know if it's even worth mentioning in these reviews anymore, but some of Wacom's lower end products still have that gap. And I think this is something that separates this from them. Now the colors on this screen look really good. This is 140% sRGB. It has a 12,000 to one contrast ratio. That's gonna give you really good blacks, really good whites. You also get 200 nits of brightness, not a ton, but if you're using this inside in a non-sunny area, you should be fine. This also has an anti-glare coating on the screen and this keeps the light that might be overhead from reflecting too much on your screen while you're drawing. This anti-glare coating is also going to give you just a little bit of drawing resistance which is going to give your pen more control. It's not going to feel like it's just dancing around the screen and sliding about. Now I mentioned the cords that it comes with. You can connect this with just one single USB-C cord to your computer, but if you have an older computer that doesn't support USB-C yet, no worries, you've got the USB type A cord it comes with and the HDMI cable as well. What about the pen? How is that to use? I've got a lot to say about that, but before I get to it, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. 
manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights, all in one easy to use platform. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has the merchandising features that you need to make your products look their best online. Squarespace takes all the guesswork out of search engine optimization for your website, which means you'll get found in search by more people more often. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bragkolbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's take a look at what this pen does well. The first thing I always like to look at is pen pressure. How well does it hold pressure around curves? Is it doing anything funky? Like, for example, sometimes you'll see some weird wavy lines around the edges. I'm not seeing any of that. My smoothing is set to zero, so that is a good sign. My initial impressions are good. The other thing I like to look at is can it hold pressure around curves? So if I do medium pressure, holds pressure well there. Hard pressure holds pressure well there. Super light pressure is holding pressure there because I wanna see if it's blowing out anywhere on the pressure curve. You know, when you take an angle, sometimes you apply a little bit more pressure and it gets a thicker line that you don't anticipate. This looks good. The other thing that I like to take a look at are fast hatch lines just to see how that performs. I'm always looking at the end of the lines to see how the taper does. This taper looks really good. Um, if anything, it, it thins out at the end of the line, but I don't, I don't think that's bad at all. The one thing you want to avoid is like a shoestring effect uh, at the end of the lines where that pressure just kicks off way too fast or way too slow. And overall, I think this leaves really nice fast hatch lines if you're going. There is a little bit of a check mark thing that's happening here um, when you start to get really fast, but for the most part, at the speed I'm usually working at, it seems to be working pretty well. And then of course, the last thing that I like to check for, which is just overall line quality. If I'm drawing a slow angled line, am I getting a lot of wave? Uh, I don't know if I wanna break out the ruler for this. I see a little bit of wave, but overall this line looks good. Let's break out the ruler. And again, I am not using a ruler in order to get a straight line. I'm using a ruler in order to see if there's any you know, discrepancy in the line or any kind of uh, mechanical wave to it. And maybe just a tiny bit, but overall, I think this is really good. This is on par with pretty much everything Huion has done over the last, it's a year or two. Uh, their pens have, you know, gotten better and better, and I think this is another example of that. When you have a display this big that takes up your whole desk, it's hard to have a keyboard off to the side that's conveniently accessible. Instead of doing shortcut keys directly on the display, Huion has opted for a very simple remote. Now there are some really fancy, expert, pro level, shortcut, amazing remotes out there, but all you really need this thing to do is to occasionally undo things, maybe change your brush size, zoom in and out, you know, the basics. That's, that's pretty much what you want your remote to do. And you can do that here. You can program any of the keys to be any keyboard shortcut you want. There's also a scroll wheel along the top. I set that for zoom. You could set that for your brushes or to rotate or to do some other function that's handy for you. It does have an internal battery and can be charged via the USB cable that it comes with. When it's charged up, you can unplug it, use it wirelessly using the little USB dongle that it comes with and handily fits into one of the extra USB-A hubs along the side. And I didn't use this long enough to make the battery drain, but it seems like it's gonna last a couple days per charge. The remote is controlled through the same drivers that the tablet is controlled through. Overall, that works pretty well. Every so often, the drivers would lose my tablet when I had the remote plugged in to charge. This wasn't a huge deal. This was just something where I had to unplug the USB-C cable from my computer and replug it in for it to refine the monitor and then pull all my windows back over to the new screen. I should also point out I am using an early version of this tablet before it's publicly available. So it's possible that these drivers might be sorted out by the time you get your hands on it. So the remote, it's a nice addition. It's not fancy, but it gets the job done. Pros and cons, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. Usually I can find something to, to go on about and say, oh, this is a trade off you're getting with this over that. But I gotta say, screen looks really cool. I like the inclusion of the remote instead of the shortcut keys. Of course, this is not for the price sensitive. However, for this size and this quality of display, the price seems pretty reasonable. Quality costs money. There are places where you can tell they're saving on costs. For example, that shortcut remote isn't as premium as say, Sense Lab's new remote or even the little Wacom remote. Like that one, 
uh, magnetically attaches to the side. It's small enough to move around. But this one... It works. It does what it needs to do. It's it's fine. And the end result is you're probably saving $50, $100 on the price of the device. Now comparing this directly to the Wacom Cintiq Pro 24, I could go either way. This has smaller bezels and takes up less room on your desk, so that's a plus. The Wacom has that etched glass screen I mentioned before, and you can get that with touch. The pen on the Wacom is also a little bit better. So if we're going head to head and just asking which is better, the Huion or the Wacom, I would say, okay, the Wacom is a better product. But where the real question comes in is when we look at the price. Price per value. The Wacom is like this much better, but it costs significantly more. Is it worth it for the money that you're paying? I don't know. For me, the answer is probably going to be no. For someone who needs that improved pen, the answer might be yes. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.